Our reporter Liu Jiaxing has spoken to Talisia Adams, a Tongan living in Australia, who is still very concerned about her family after the volcanic eruption and tsunami. I managed to finally talk to friends and family yesterday and, and today. Um, it was so good to hear their voices and um, and I think for them as well, it's just the um, um, hearing people calling in from overseas, their friends and families, um, the mental, um, you know, like help, it, it helps them. First priority is the water. The air pollution from the ashes is really bad. Maybe um, like masks and stuff like that. So they, you know, like protection for the people as well. I know that communication um, locally is still like really um, challenging. They are still trying to um, connect with the other islands from Hapai and Mabao. Because I think the line is like all busy with everyone trying to call in at the same time. So maybe that's what happened. Most of the islands that were um, damaged, um, the people that lives there have been evacuated to to the main island i know that people are, are very resilient and they're um they're helping each other they're cleaning up after all the damages and um the debris and everything that was destroyed uh, for the long run it's just the it's the rebuilding a survivor of the tonga tsunami is sharing his experience of being swept to sea and making his way to another island Lisela Fulau is a retired carpenter from the island of Atata. The 57-year-old suffers from motion disability. He was swept away last Saturday by waves but managed to stay afloat for more than a day. He eventually made his way across 7.5 kilometers of sea to the main island of Tongatapu. This is what he had to say. The scariest part of the ordeal for me was when the waves took me from land into the sea. Everything is gone, but my heart is on Atata. I was raised there, my parents are buried there, and I will go back there one day. <laughs> 